So you got yourself an unresponsive yo-yo like this one-up yo-yo right here, and you know the kind that I'm talking about, the kind that can spin like three to 10 times longer than yo-yos of the previous generation, the kind of yo-yo that inverts all the rules of yo-yoing so that even though it's spinning down at the bottom of the string, it does not come back up when you pull on it, except of course, when you perform a trick known as a bind, and that allows you to do so many more wild and amazing tricks like the multifarious whip, which you can learn in the yoyotricks.com app if you want to download it. You can also learn 350 other tricks and keep track of your progress. It's amazing. But we're talking about unresponsive yo-yos like the one-up yo-yo here. So you are just loving this. You're learning all kinds of crazy, amazing tricks. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, the yo-yo comes back when you didn't want it to. And so what's going on? Is the yo-yo broken? How do you fix it? Well, that's what this video is all about. Now, if you clicked on this video and you're wondering how come your yo-yo won't stay down at the bottom of the string at all, at the end of this video, I will address that. And there's actually a pretty simple fix, but this video is really for unresponsive yo-yos that spin and aren't supposed to come back up when you pull them up, but for some reason your yo-yo is. Now, the most important thing that you need to do in order to solve this problem is actually just figure out whether or not you even have a problem with your yo-yo. And I know what you're thinking, Adam, my yo-yo's coming back when I don't want it to, of course I have a problem. But think about this, if you are just doing tricks and the yo-yo is just moving in between all these different strings and whatnot, and then as you're doing tricks, all of a sudden the yo-yo comes back when you didn't want it to, well, there's a pretty good chance that you had just accidentally landed the yo-yo into a backspin mount. And as you may or may not know, backspin mounts are the mounts you use to get the yo-yo back. And so if you accidentally got your yo-yo into a backspin mount and it performed a bind and came back, that actually means your yo-yo is working properly. And so if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, definitely check out our bind theory video. We explain all the mechanics of how binds work and that will help you to stop making this mistake. And so actually, if you wanna diagnose the problem with your yo-yo, all you need to do is just throw it down and uh, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna to touch the yo-yo just a little bit to make sure it's not vibrating. Some yo-yos, when you throw them, it'll have some vibration on it and that could cause the yo-yo to come back even if the yo-yo is working just fine. So get it so that it's spinning really smooth and then just give it a little tiny tug up into the air like this. Now what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna tug the yo-yo all the way back up to your hand because when you do that, the string may accidentally get underneath the yo-yo and if the yo-yo lands on the string, it might perform a bind and come back again, which only tells you that your yo-yo is working how it's supposed to and it doesn't help you diagnose the problem if the yo-yo is coming back when it's not supposed to. So just throw the yo-yo down and pull it up slightly. Now when the yo-yo is working properly, what you'll see is that the string will kind of bend and flop on either side of the yo-yo. That's what's supposed to happen. When the yo-yo is not working properly, what you're going to see is the string is gonna wrap around the axle a few times every time you pull it up just a little bit. Now, one thing that could be causing this that again, doesn't mean your yo-yo is messed up, is if you have allowed a lot of string tension into your yo-yo like this. If you have a lot of strings that are getting twisted like this, that can cause the yo-yo to come back when you don't want it to. So the best thing that you can do is just take it off your finger, get rid of all this string tension, and once it's all gone, just like that, you can put it right back on your finger and then give the yo-yo a proper throw and pull the yo-yo up. And if you see that string starting to wind around the axle or if the yo-yo comes all the way back to your hand, then you definitely know there's a problem. And there's a really, really simple way to know exactly what that problem is. All you need to solve it is this. So let's get to it. Now, I know what you're thinking. How is a pencil going to help me get my yo-yo up and running? Well, it's pretty simple. What we are gonna do is we are going to test the speed of your bearing. Specifically, we're gonna test how long your bearing will spin on the tip of a pencil. And the number you wanna keep in mind is the number three, and that is three seconds. In my experience, any bearing that spins on the tip of a pencil for more than three seconds will play consistently unresponsive. If you wanna be absolutely sure, then go to five seconds. And just about all bearings, if they're in good working condition, will spin for five seconds really easy. So what does a bearing look like that does not spin that long? Well, what you do is you just put it on the tip of your pencil and then you're just gonna spin it. And you can see that one did not spin three seconds. This bearing is playing a little bit responsive. Now I've got another one that is spinning very close to three seconds. Oh, that was not a good. Okay, so that one's really on the borderline. Um, 
this one plays unresponsive. And so it doesn't have to spin that long. Uh, now, you might also be wondering if your bearing is really loud. You can see this one sounds a lot different. Um, because it spins more than three seconds, definitely more than five, this bearing plays perfectly, even though it sounds kind of like a disaster. Now, um, this all implies that everything else on your yo-yo is working fine. So make sure that you don't have any string tension when you test your yo-yo out. Make sure that your yo-yo isn't vibrating like crazy when you do the test. Um, you can open up your yo-yo and take a look at the response pads. Make sure that they're perfectly flush. If they're sticking out a little bit, they might grab the string awkwardly sometimes, and that could cause the yo-yo to be a little bit responsive. Now, let's say that you test your bearing, and your bearing is spinning perfectly fine. Well, then what's the problem? Well, now there is a really, really rare circumstance where sometimes on the inside of your yo-yo, right, usually around where the response pad is, and sometimes very rarely under the bearing, there's a little burr, and you can just feel around the edge of the yo-yo, and you can kind of feel that. It, it just won't feel smooth. And so that little teeny burr, because of where it is, and the string is often going to touch there, it can cause your yo-yo to play kind of inconsistently responsive. And so if that's the case, unfortunately, that is going to be really, really tricky to fix. Most likely that is just kind of a deal breaker for that particular yo-yo. I wouldn't look for these things on your yo-yo unless your yo-yo is having a problem and the bearing is working perfectly fine. Now, if, if you're not convinced by the three to five second rule, another way to test a bearing is to have another yo-yo that's playing perfectly fine. Put the bearing that you're suspecting is the problem into that yo-yo and see if that yo-yo plays responsive or unresponsive. A bad bearing will play responsive in just about every yo-yo you put it in. And I would say if your yo-yo is playing responsive and you've checked all the other things that are easy to check, 95% of the time, maybe even more than that, the bearing is the problem. So let's say that you have a problem with your bearing. What do you do? Well, the first thing you can do if your bearing is not spinning long enough on the tip of a pencil is you can clean the bearing. And we've got a really detailed, thorough video on how to clean. A lot of people have had success cleaning their bearings with this. So definitely try that out. Uh, the second thing you can do is if just recently your bearing started playing a little bit responsive, sometimes thin yo-yo lube can save the bearing. And so you just put in the tiniest amount you can. I usually say like a quarter to a half a drop of thin yo-yo lube and then play with the bearing for a little while. Do some rail combos if you know how to do that. Anything where the string slides through the yo-yo, then um, an easier one would be like skin the gerbil. We'll do this. That'll make sure that the lube gets kind of evenly distributed through the bearing. You may notice the bearing start to quiet down if you put enough lube in. Um, you want to be careful not to over lube because the more lube you put in, the less time it will spin when you run the pencil test, which means that it's going to be creeping up toward responsiveness. So you want to put in the smallest amount you can to solve the problem. And if you do that and it works, that's great. If not, then you probably have to go through the process of cleaning it. So um, yeah, not a tough fix. This is what you want. But um, now let's talk about, like we said at the beginning, if your yo-yo isn't spinning at all, then what's the problem? Now, if your yo-yo isn't sleeping at all, there's almost 90% of the time it's exactly the same problem, and that is you did not put the string onto the yo-yo the right way. And there's a few wrong ways that people typically do it. Uh, the first one is they assume that since this end of the string has a loop in it, that end is for the yo-yo. But that's not true. This end is for your finger. And so if you have been putting this end onto the yo-yo and it's not sleeping, that's most likely your problem. Now, of course, you do want to put this end of the string on, but people look at that and they think, huh, how does that go on there? Maybe I should tie it onto the yo-yo. But you also don't want to do that because if you do that, again, the yo-yo won't sleep. So what is it that you're supposed to do? Well, what you need to do is you need to take this end right here and you need to pull the strings apart just like this so that they go around your thumb and middle finger and then you can slip them right onto the yo-yo. Now this actually leads into the third way. And this is probably the most common problem that happens when people are putting on the string is they don't want to put the string onto the yo-yo while it's together because you have to open it up so wide. But a lot of new players, like I said, they like to do it when their yo-yo is apart because you don't have to open up the string quite as much. But watch what happens. If you put the string onto the bearing just like this, 
a lot of times it will fall off. And if it happens to fall off while you're putting the yo-yo together, it will slip off the bearing onto the axle right here. And you can see if you put the yo-yo all the way together, then it is going to actually fall underneath the bearing. And when you look at the yo-yo, you can see that it has slipped right under the bearing and it will not sleep at all that way. And so if that's what's happening to you, the solution is simple. You just put the string onto the yo-yo after it is put together. Now there's a few other reasons a yo-yo might not sleep. If you got kind of a cheaper yo-yo that doesn't have a bearing, then if the string gets a little bit too tight, then it won't spin. And so you're going to need to remove the string, get all the string tension out, and then put the string back on. That'll usually fix it. Make sure the halves aren't pushed too close together. If you have a yo-yo with a brain, that brain mechanism actually keeps the yo-yo from spinning unless you throw it hard enough. And a lot of times when you're new, you assume you're throwing it hard enough when in fact uh, your technique just isn't good enough yet. So sometimes patience is in order. Now there are other reasons that are a lot less common. And so if this hasn't answered your question, we do have a video about all the different reasons why your yo-yo might not sleep. And if you are interested in watching more tutorials like this, the best place to do it is on the Yo-Yo Tricks app. And so you can check out a whole bunch of tutorials just like this.